CBS 2 is always investigating. Tonight we're digging into the mystery behind this young woman's death after her suburban mother reached out to us for help. Her daughter died unexpectedly in North Carolina a year ago. CBS 2's Tim McNicholas reports the mom has tried everything but still can't get any clear answers about the investigation. Courtney! Courtney! Call coming out one. Shortly after this frantic call was made, an ambulance arrived to this rural North Carolina home. Are you still doing CPR? But despite attempts to revive Courtney Heater, I got two officers in there. EMTs pronounced her dead at 4 a.m. on February 2nd, 2020. I just didn't believe it. Her mom, Debbie Heater, who lives in Plainfield, was shocked when she heard the news. How could she be gone? She's 24 years old. She was an athlete. She was healthy. The news devastated Debbie and Cassidy Mutri. Courtney's childhood friend. She should be here. But even more devastating, a year later, they're unable to piece together what happened the night she died. She was the friend you could always go to, the daughter you could always go to. She was always there for everyone. Courtney moved to Columbus County, North Carolina in 2018 to live with her boyfriend, but her childhood home is still filled with memories of her. There's her skydiving. Yes, she made this little ceramic thing in high school. Um, she helped me paint this wall. There's 62 crosses on here. These pictures of rugby, bike riding, and tailgating are a stark contrast to the ones Courtney took during her final months. The cause? A police report points to her being assaulted by her boyfriend. So does this emergency room paperwork. It's devastating. Six months after her death, Debbie finally received Courtney's autopsy report. Noted in the report, more abuse. But the cause of death, accidental heroin and fentanyl overdose. Debbie and Cassidy say they're worried Courtney's boyfriend may have forced her to take the drugs. Just because someone has drugs in their system does not mean that they took it. But the lead detective on Courtney's case seems to disagree. Based on the autopsy, uh, there's no further investigation for a homicide. To help her keep track of Courtney's case, Debbie recorded her calls with Columbus County Sheriff's Department. I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't think anything didn't happen. I can sit here and say I think something I did happen. I would have the same questions you do. She says the answers she's received are inconsistent. So are the answers we've gotten. The chief deputy told us the department offered to cover the cost of Debbie's flight to North Carolina. She says that's untrue. He also told us all nearby neighbors were interviewed. We reached out to a neighbor who lives just 240 feet away. She says she's never been contacted. It's like, it, it, she wasn't worth anything. Unable to get clear answers about where the investigation stands, Debbie filed a subpoena for the sheriff's department's case file. But all she could obtain was the 911 call, a two-page police report, and an EMT report that's missing the third page. I think today I'm going to know. Today something's going to come in the mail, or I'm going to get an email or a phone call. And we're going to know today. And at the end of the day, it doesn't happen. For now, Debbie's cherishing her memories of Courtney. Tim McNicholas, CBS 2 News. The sheriff's office tells us that the investigation is still open, but wouldn't specify if any interviews have been conducted aside from those in the initial two-page police report.